My name's Jackie Kent, and I'm the Senior Vice President and Head of Product for Metadata. What that means at Metadata is I am responsible for the strategy of our RAVE Clinical Cloud, all the way from the very early stages of strategy, development, and go-to-market, all the way through the implementation and the support of our customers. Diversity in Clinical Trials is one of our special interest groups within Metadata. It's part of our, our entire social responsibilities. And this topic is very special to us and to me because it allows us to get closer to the patient, get closer to what's really important, take our solutions, our data, and our technologies, and really help to broaden, broaden the ability to be in a clinical trial to many more patients. So today, um, less than 3% of patients have the availability to get into a clinical trial. Some of that comes from where they live, some of it is social and economical, some of it is um, the remote locations within a state or a country. And so what we're trying to do is help to get uh, more clinical trials to more patients, no matter where they are, no matter what their means are, no matter what their race, their religion, really to make it a true uh, standard of care option for all patients. So we're doing a few different things. The, one of the things that we're doing is just using our data to help our sponsors and our partners find these patients, find the patients that may not be um, easily available to the large sites. So we're, we're trying to use these data sources and bringing those to uh, people conducting clinical research. The other side is really making tools. So we have ECOA, we have eConsent, we have the ability to, to run virtual trials. And again, if you're in a remote location, if you have um, a more difficult situation in getting to a site, we're, we're building tools to help you uh, reduce your burden and be able to participate in a clinical trial no matter where you are. A lot of the lack of diversity comes from the social economical uh, situations that face some of our minor minority populations. And so many of those facilities that might be in a, a, lower, a lower economical area might not have enough physicians to even be a clinical investigator because they're overpopulated. Um, but a lot of that comes from lack of education and the social economical side of the, of the equation. There are two, two key benefits. One is the actual outcomes of the trial, if you want to say the statistical outcomes, and then there's the benefit to the patient of more medicines to patients faster. So if you look at it purely from a number and a statistical perspective, there are differences in the ethnic makeup of people. And so making sure that you test medicines on all the different possibilities um, is very important. Uh, that's the statistical side of the equation. And then there's just the people side, the, the making sure that people who don't have treatment options have a treatment option no matter where they live, no matter what their race. The industry itself is really just trying to make sure everyone has equal options and opportunities. Um, Precision medicine is about getting the right molecule or the right drug to the right patient with um, less, less non-beneficial um, options. And in this case, it's the same thing. If you have a certain gene, if you have a certain, um, a certain type of ethnical background and we know something won't work on you, then we want to get it to the right patient, the patient that's going to receive benefit first. And again, using the data that we have, we have the ability to really increase the probability of getting that right medicine to the right patient. You will see um, quite a few different advocacy groups that are very um, if you want to say very vocal, but in a very positive way, I don't mean that in a negative way, a very positive way in across the world that really are out there speaking for their patients. And advocacy groups tend to be around therapeutic areas. There's diabetes advocacy groups and there's uh, through all types of different oncology uh, therapeutics there are. And those groups are specifically trying to broaden within their areas. And they're all speaking about diversity in clinical trials right now. And again, they're doing it because it's clinically very important to make sure every population of people is being, the medicines are being tested on them and that we're ensuring the outcomes that are, are appropriate, but also from you know the ethical standpoint of making sure that medicines are available to everybody.
So specifically between the U.S. and, and Europe, the most differences are, are through the difference between socialized medicine and privatized medicine, which is probably the biggest gap between the U.S. and Europe. And so based on those two differences, just in how those healthcare systems tend to operate, you don't see the diversity look quite the same. Where in the U.S. we're very focused on the racial differences, where in the UK and in Europe, it's much more of the geography differences in, in the socialized medicine. Um, diversity is still very important in both of the areas, but we have different, uh, different factors based on the, the medicine systems. The public are very, very much behind the diversity in clinical trials because I believe the public is very interested in everyone being treated equally. There's still a little mistrust in really understanding the benefits of a clinical trial in general, but the issues that we have with a trust on clinical trials and making sure people are very well educated aren't specific to diversity in clinical trials. They're a broad clinical trial issue that everybody's trying to help solve, right? Building that confidence in why it is good for you to go into a clinical trial and why that is a positive treatment option for you.